Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy back again today with another fantasy football mock draft video. Today we're doing a 10 team PPR from the second pick as requested by one of my subscribers, 22 Outlights. Thank you for watching the video. And if you are not a subscriber right now, you might as well do that because if you subscribe down below, I'm going to be helping you win your fantasy football championship. I'm going to help you by helping you dominate the draft. Then you're going to dominate during the regular season, dominate during the postseason by all of these waivers, all of these trades, all these matchups. I'm going to be helping you with about all these streamers, all of that shit I'm going to help you with. So let's get right into this video. Like I said, it's a 10 team PPR mock draft from the second position. So let's get right into this shit. So the first pick is Saquon Barkley. Pretty typical. Now, my old second pick would have been Zeke. I would have loved to get Zeke here, but now with Zeke holding out, I ain't about to draft Zeke at number two, which is perfectly fine. Pretty typical for people to do. So we're going to avoid Zeke here and just go with Christian McCaffrey, a guy who I think is very safe here and I think could end up being pretty good. He Now, his coach said Rivera or whoever the fuck said it, someone in the Panthers organization was like, oh, we're going to try to limit the amount of snaps he plays, but give him more touches. I'm not sure how that's fucking possible. If it's even possible, he's going to be even better. So we're going to go with Christian McCaffrey, half wide receiver, half running back, 100% a great fantasy football player, especially in fucking PPR. So after Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara went followed by Ezekiel Elliott, DeAndre Hopkins, Michael Thomas, Le'Veon Bell, DeAndre Hopkins. I don't know, wait, what the hell? Le'Veon Bell, Devontae Adams, DJ, Tyreek Hill, Todd Gurley, Juju Smith-Schuster, James Conner, Odell Beckham Jr., Dalvin Cook, Travis Kelsey, Joe Mixon, Julio Jones. So, the first tight end did go off the board at the 2-6, Travis Kelsey. Now, if we look back here, we can see that DeAndre Hopkins went and then Michael Thomas. Typically, if you're what you're doing, you need to be drafting Devontae Adams ahead of DeAndre Hopkins. But if you think DeAndre Hopkins is better, you can't draft Michael Thomas ahead of Devontae Adams. That just makes zero sense in my opinion. He's the best wide receiver in fantasy, in my opinion. He is going to be getting a shit ton of targets. Rogers is going to be throwing him the ball all types of time. He said that he wants to target... Um, he, uh, Aaron Rodgers said he wants to target Devontae Adams even more. And Devontae Adams was already getting targeted heavily. So that... It's going to be pretty crazy. So, we're going to go running back again because we like to go this running back, running back strategy here in these easy 10-team leagues. 10-team leagues should be very easy to make the playoffs in and be pretty easy to win because it's pretty easy to get a stacked team. And I think that getting two stacked running backs right in a row is going to be very advantageous to us winning the championship if this was real. Obviously, this is a mock, but this is I'm trying to help 22 outlights over here win the, his league. So, this is what I would do. So... It just so happens that someone just accident just left me a comment on YouTube, so I just looked at my phone. So I'm sorry if I sounded like a fucking idiot right there. So we're gonna go with Nick Chubb here, best running back available. He's gonna be a guy that absolutely eats this year. The Cleveland Browns traded Dante. No, they didn't trade Dante Foreman. That was the Colts. He they traded um the Duke Duke Johnson all the way. Sent him, sent him kicking to the Texans, and now it's going to be the it's the Chubb show. It's the half Chubb show. He went from half Chubb to fucking full Chubb. He's rock solid, and he's going to be great in fantasy football this year. At the end of the second round, this is a great pick. So after we went, Nick Chubb, A.B. came out the board, followed by Mike Evans. So... Typically here, we would go wide receiver, but I think that the value is just too good here on Damian Williams to pass it up. Now, I do love on Johnson, and that is true, but I think Damian Williams, if he can stay healthy, will end up being great this year in fantasy. I think we could end up with three top 10 or three top 12 potential running backs here with Chubb, Christian McCaffrey, and Damian Williams. Now, Damian Williams is on the best offense in the NFL. Arguably, the Chiefs are the best offense in the NFL. Damian Williams is an absolute weapon, an absolute god here on this team. Now, a lot of people tell me, oh, he doesn't get the snaps, or he hasn't been able to perform over a whole career. He has the concussions. Blah, 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 blah. If he is the one at the running back one, I want the running back one on the Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to be scoring so many fucking points that it's absolutely crazy. D'Angelo, or not D'Angelo Williams, Damian Williams proved that he was able to do it last year. He played great when he was called upon after Kareem Hunt hit that bitch with the karate kick. You know what I'm saying? So, we're going to go... With and I, I I hope you guys can take a joke when I say stuff like that because I don't obviously mean. Okay, never mind. I'm not even gonna explain it. But Damian Williams is a great fucking pick right here, and we're gonna go with him. After we selected Damian Williams, Melvin Gordon went followed by Carryon Johnson, Aaron Jones, Adam Thielen, Marlon Mack, Leonard Fournette, Keenan Allen, T. Y. Hilton, Pat Mahomes, Amari Cooper, Zach Ertz, George Kittle, Stephen Diggs, 
Josh Jacobs, Brandon Cooks, Kenny Galladay. So like I said, guys, you should not really be drafting Melvin Gordon due to this holdout thing. His holdout is even more confusing than Zeke's because I think Zeke is going to end up playing even if it is just week two he comes back. Melvin Gordon is the complete opposite. He could be out for fucking eight. He could hold out eight games. He may get his ass traded. I'm recording this video on the 9th in the morning, or actually late at night. It's like one in the morning when I'm recording this. So if he got traded while you're watching this, then obviously pick Melvin Gordon if he ended up on a good team or if he ended up signing a new contract. But right now, I really don't know. that I, Melvin Gordon was originally probably my fifth pick. I would have picked him ahead of DJ or maybe DJ ahead of him, but he was like a top six running back. Now I'm just avoiding him at all costs. I don't want anything to do with a running back in the third round who may not even play until week nine. So just fuck that and completely avoid that. So it's our pick here. We've already loaded up my running back, so it's time to go wideouts. And in these 10-team leagues, there's great wideout options here in the fourth and fifth round that I'm perfectly happy starting my team off with here. So Julian Edelman, Robert Woods, Chris Godwin, all three great targets here. Julian Edelman, kind of my, it was my favorite until he hurt his thumb because I think that puts the image into my mind of how injury prone he is. Now, if you draft Julian Edelman, you need to assume that he's going to miss like three games, okay? When you pull this trigger on him, you need to know that he's not going to be healthy the whole season, but he'll likely be there for most of your games. And when he's out there, he's going to perform for you. He is getting, he gets so many targets. Brady loves this man. He loves throwing it to him. So he's going to be getting like 10, 11 targets a game. He's a PPR fucking beast. So I like Julian Edelman, but I'd rather get Robert Woods because I think that Robert Woods is going to be more steady. Now, he's not as injury prone, obviously, and I think that the Rams are going to be throwing the ball a shit ton with Todd Gurley being fucked up with his arthritis knee. So I like Robert Woods here. I also went Mr. Robert Woods. Derrick Henry went followed by Julian Edelman, so that's fine because we got Chris Godwin. Now, Chris Godwin is the wide receiver, too, on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers behind the number one, whose name is Mike Evans. Sorry, guys. I'm pretty stupid. I forget things like that now. Mike Evans is great, and so is Chris Godwin. The famous Jameis-led Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you may think, oh, they're going to be bad. Yeah, they may be bad in real life, but they're going to be great in fantasy because they're going to be on offense all the time because their defense is fucking terrible. Their offense is going to be on the field a lot trying to come back in these games. They play in a division that has a lot of shootout-type games. When they play New Orleans, shootout. When they play the Panthers, shootout. When they play the Falcons, shootout. Shootout season over there. It's like the fucking wild, wild west in that division, and I think that Chris Godwin is going to be play very good. He was pretty good last year as the number three behind Adam Humph Daddy, the Humph Daddy, who is now gone on the Tennessee Titans, but that's okay because Chris Godwin's the wide receiver too now, and he's going to absolutely eat this season. I love Chris Godwin here in the fifth round. So after we went with Chris, Cod after we went with Chris Godwin, Devontae Freeman went followed by David Montgomery, Philip Lindsay, Calvin Ridley, Chris Carson, Mark Ingram, Jameis or not Jameis White, James White, A.J. Green, Tyler Lockett, Cooper Cup, D.J. Moore, Tyler Boyd, Sony Michelle, Andrew Luck, Jarvis Landry, O.J. Howard. So the first quarterback went at the 4-1, Pat Mahomes. That's pretty normal for these drafts. Now, you need to realize in your at-home league, he may end up going in the first or second round. Someone will bite on Pat Mahomes. You're not going to do it, but someone will. Some idiot will, and you're just going to trust the process and not fucking do that. So after, now it is our pick. So it's at the 6-9 Nice, you know what I'm saying? Very nice. Very nice. My wife. Okay, so OJ Howard went. Still some great tight end value available. Still some great quarterbacks available. Now, I think Aaron Rodgers will likely be gone before you make this pick in your at-home league. And I think that Andrew Luck is not a safe pick at all right now due to his calf strain. He strained his calf in April. It's still a lingering uh, injury now. He says he's going to be good to go for week one. Can you trust Andrew Luck, the guy who said he was fine just two years ago and didn't play a single game? Can you trust him? No. Is he a great quarterback when he's healthy? Yes. So we're going to hope that Andrew Luck has a safe recovery here and is able to play in the next couple of weeks. But with that being said, if Aaron Rodgers was here... Right now, I'd about 100% pull the trigger here, but I don't know if he would be here in your at-home draft, so I'm not going to go with that, and I'm just going to go and get one more elite wide out and then just start building more running back depth. Now, the tight ends available are still pretty good, so if you wanted to be, if you're a big tight end guy, you love Evan Ingram, you love Hunter Henry, you love Jared Cook, you love Eric Ebron. If you love Eric Ebron, I think that is not the correct decision. Now that we're not sure about Andrew Luck's health, and we're also not sure about the fact, we do know actually for a fact that Eric Ebron and Jack Doyle are going to be out there a lot 
together or not even out there together. I think Jack Doyle is the better blocking tight end, so he'll be out there more. And then Mo Ali Cox is still there, so they got a three tight end, the tight end shuffle over there, like the fucking Cupid shuffle, like the dance. They're fucking rotating in and out. Very confusing. Do I want Eric Ebron this year? No. Last year, he was amazing because he was really the only tight end on the team. Mo Ali Cox is not that great, but he was still there, stealing some touchdowns. But I do think that Eric Ebron, if... Jack Doyle was to not be here. He would be fucking great. But you're drafting upon last year where Jack Doyle was not there. And that's just an idiot strategy in my opinion. So right here, we have are looking at a guy like Mike Williams, Alshon Jeffrey, Dante Pettis, Robbie Anderson, Alshon Jeffrey. Bunch of these guys. Bunch of okay names here. But I'm just going to go for the home run pick here. And we're going to go with the guy who scored 10 touchdowns last year and is now the wide receiver numero two on the team. So the wide receiver three, they say, get the fuck out of here, other Williams. Get the hell out of here, Tyrell Williams. And they said, go to the Raiders. Go with Mr. A.B. Business is booming. But you know what is not booming? A.B.'s feet because his feet are frostbitten. But that has nothing to do with this pick. Mike Williams is going to be great this year. He scored 10 touchdowns last year. Obviously, there may be some regression. It may only be like eight this year because Hunter Henry's back. Hunter Henry is going to be still in these touchdowns. But Mike... Mike Williams is still going to be great. He's still a pretty fast receiver, a pretty good receiver, can catch the ball, obviously. That's why he's a starting wide receiver in the NFL. But I think that the Chargers are going to rely more heavily on the pass game while uh, Mr. Melvin Gordon is out. So I think that Mike Williams is going to be a great pick here. After we selected Mike Williams, Tariq Cohen went, follow, actually, followed by Tevin Coleman. So I wouldn't have hated going Pettis or Anderson there. Pick your poison. You know, any of those guys is going to be pretty good here. So now... Aaron Rodgers is still on the board. So I'm going to actually just take him because if Aaron Rodgers is on the board here, you're just an idiot if you don't take him here. Aaron Rodgers is going to be the number two quarterback. I think Pat Mahomes is going to be number one still. He's not going to throw 50 touchdowns, I believe. He'll probably throw like 40 or 42, which is still a fabulous season. But I think Aaron Rodgers is going to throw more than 30 that he threw last year. And I think that he was kind of fucked up after getting hurt against the Bears. He was all loopy in that game. Got the comeback. But I think that Aaron Rodgers is going to be throwing more touchdowns. He has great wide receivers. Devontae Adams, one of the best wideouts in the NFL. He's got MVS, Jerron Allison, a bunch of great wide receiver options. He still has old Jimmy Graham, that old fuck. And he's going to be pretty good this year. So we're going to go with Aaron Rodgers here at the 7-2. After we went Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson went followed by Evan Ingram, Dante Pettis, Keenan Allen, Baker Mayfield, Matty Ice, Lamar Miller, Alshon Jeffrey, Rashad Penny, Austin Ekla, Jerron Allison, Christian, Kirk, Hunter, Henry, Will Fuller, Drew Brees, Robbie Anderson. So we started that quarterback train. We hopped on early and got the best quarterback available. So that's great. So now we're going to keep building this running back depth. Now the tight ends are looking pretty okay here, but I think we can wait till the 10th and potentially get Mr. Vance McDonald here. So we're going to go with a running back now. We're going to go with safety here. We already got a kind of risky man in Damian Williams, I think he's kind of risky. Now, I, I do like him a lot, but he's kind of risky due to that concussion problem he has and due to the fact that he has a hamstring injury, and he came back very early, very fast in a practice because the Kool-Aid man, Andy Reid, was fucking pissed off. So, right now, we are just going to go with a running back that I think is safe, that is going to be a solid flex option, and that is Mr. Latavius Murray. Latavius Murray is the running back two on the team. Alvin Kamara is ahead of him, but even with that being so... Uh, he's still going to be involved in the rushing game, the passing game. He's probably going to get 10, 11, 12 touches a game, Latavius Murray, and be pretty happy about it. Mark, He's in that Mark Ingram role from last year. He's going to do great. And if Alvin Kamara ends up get, going down, obviously you don't hope for injuries, then Latavius Murray is going to step up to the plate and end up probably being a top 10 running back every single week while he is out. Now, Latavius Murray is not just some sorry-ass motherfucker. I think he's better than Mark Ingram, in my opinion. He was pretty good on the Raiders, pretty good on the Vikings last year, and he's a great running back, too, here for this team. And I think he's a solid flex option. In a 10-team league, maybe not as good of a flex option, but still pretty solid. So after we went Latavius Murray, Allen Robinson went, followed by Darius Geis. So now we will probably just pull the trigger on a tight end here. Now, I like Jared Cook because I think Jared Cook is going to be pretty great this year. Not great, but I think he's solid. He's pretty safe because Mr. Drew Brees loves targeting the tight end. Now, you might tell me, oh, Nick, he hasn't been thrown to the tight end as much since he had Jimmy Graham. Yeah, because he had a bunch of sorry-ass tight ends that he was throwing the ball to. Now, he has one of a, not one of the best in the game, but I'd say probably way better than any of those guys that were on the team. Jared Cook's a pretty decent tight end who can catch the ball, run some solid routes, and has a pretty big body that can catch passes in the end zone. So, I do like Jared Cook here to have... Not even a bounce back year because he played great in fantasy last year. Just a similar type of year as last year with a better quarterback on a better offense 
on a team that is looking to win their Super Bowl because Drew Brees' window may be coming to a close shortly. He's getting kind of old. After when Jared Cook, Miles Sanders went followed by Fat Sammy Watkins, Jordan Howard, Carson Wentz, Sterling, Injured, Shepard, Darrell Henderson, Eric Ebron, Rolls-Royce Freeman, Kareem Karate Kick Hunt, Kyler Murray, Larry Fitzgerald, Damian Harris, Marvin Jones, Corey Davis, Curtis Samuel, D.D. Westbrook. So a lot of the late round wide receivers that we like are already gone. So it is a okay because we got some more running backs to pick up here. We love getting more running bikes. The way to win is load up on the running backs. But with that being said, one of these wide receivers that I love is MVS is still here. We got Rodgers. We can get MVS for that connection uh, to play as our flex, potentially. So now MVS is going to be the wide receiver, two on the team, I believe, above Geronimo Ileson. Now, I think MVS or Geronimo Ileson are going to be great picks in this draft. Rodgers is going to be slinging the fucking rock all over the place. MVS is going to be the outside guy, outside the numbers. Aaron Rodgers is great throwing it outside the numbers. Geronimo Ileson is going to be stuck in the slot. Aaron Rodgers has targeted the slot in the past, but I think that MVS will have a pretty good year this year as long as he stays healthy. He played great last year, and I think that he could really build upon his rookie. Was he a rookie last year? He may not have been, and I may be talking out my ass. Yes, he was a rookie out of South Florida, so I think that his sophomore season, he ain't going to have that so- sophomore slump. He's going to have that sophomore rise. You know what I'm saying? He's rising to the tippy top, and he's a great pick here in the 10th round. So after we selected MVS, David the Chief Ninjoku has been selected, followed by Russell Wilson. So now it is our picks, and we're going to get that running back depth that I previously talked about, and we're going to build that with Ronald Jones. Now, I don't necessarily love Ronald Jones. I don't know if Ronald Jones will even end up being the starting running back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but what I do know is if he doesn't do it this year, he'll never be able to do it. Peyton Barber is not that great of a running back, even though Peyton Barber played pretty good in fantasy last year, pretty okay for someone you picked late. That's what I think about Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones was drafted highly last year, and he fucking failed you because he wasn't able to do it. This year, he has one more year of experience. He's able to do it. He should be able to do it this year. He has to be able to do it before people start declaring this man a bust and being a pick that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers wasted last season. I think Ronald Jones has potential to do it. He's looking a lot better than last season, and we're just going to hope with this pick, throw it up to the fantasy gods and hope that Ronald Jones is quite good this year. So I'm going to go with him. After we went Ronald Jones, LaShawn McCoy went followed by Vance McDonald, Cortland Sutton, Jared Goff, Nikhil Harry, Cam Newton, Deshaun Jackson, Chicago Bears defense, Jalen Samuels, Emmanuel Sanders, LA Rams defense, Dante Moncrief, Golden Tate, Kiki, do you love me, Cootie? Paint Barber AP. Don't draft Kiki Cootie. He ended up getting hurt today or yesterday. He got hurt. I believe he may be out for the season. His leg got fucked up. His leg formed some type of L. It was bad. Dr. Jesse Morris on Twitter, I retweeted it, follow me on Twitter, was talking about how this looks very bad, might be an ACL, MCL, some type of shit like that, and you know when it's one of those CLs, that means it is not good, CLNG, not good, so you don't want none of these CLs, none of the ACLs, the the MCLs, all, of the, all those fucking things. It's a 10-team league, so we ain't getting a backup quarterback. You already know who it is, you know. These backup quarterbacks, you don't need them into 10-team league. You can just pick someone up off the waiver wire to play Week 11 instead of Aaron Rodgers. So right now, it is our pick, like I have stated previously. And we are just going to build upon running back depth here. So we're going to go with Kalen. No, 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 no. We're going to go with Justin Jackson here. Quite the reach down. Reach down a bit. Get the running back on a team that needs a running back because Melvin Gordon is holding out. If Melvin Gordon ends up signing that contract, don't draft Justin Jackson unless you're handcuffing him for Melvin Gordon. Justin Jackson could end up having eight weeks of greatness this year and play pretty well while Melvin Gordon's out. And I love that upside here for Justin Jackson in the 12th round. This is about where he'll probably be going once it becomes draft season. So after Justin Jackson went, the Jaguars uh, defense was selected. So now it is our pick. Sorry about that. I had to mute my mic because I had to sneeze, and you guys did not want to hear that fucking sneeze that just came out of my mouth. So it is our pick, and we already got, let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six running backs. And we've got one, a two, a three, a four wide receivers. So I'm going to go with one more wide out here and just hope for the best. So we're going to go with a guy who I think could end up emerging this year, and that's DK Metcalf. Now, I don't love DK Metcalf. I don't claim to love DK Metcalf. But what I do love is the fact that he's fucking huge. Pete Carroll seems to love him. And I think that he's going to have definitely 
this year he's going to be great in in uh DFS. You start him like he's going to have like five great games. The other games you're going to just be very confused about it. But we're going to just watch the preseason, figure out what DK Metcalf is really about if he's playing in preseason. We'll figure it out a couple weeks in the season. And he's a 13th round pick. So if he ends up not being anything, you can just cut his sorry ass, his ripped ass. That dude's crazy. He's huge. And I think that he could end up being great for this team. Will it be this year? Will he be able to run routes and that actually make you turn? Because once he fucking turns, he slows down. But what if he, when he's running straight, he's perfectly fine. So we're going to go DK Metcalf here. After when DK Metcalf, Famous Jameis was selected, followed by Kalen Balazs, Dante Moncrief, Jarek McKinnon, Phillip Rivers, TJ Hawkinson, LA Chargers, Dickie Dak Prescott, Carlos Hyde, Greg the Legs Erline, Justin Tucker, Baltimore Ravens, Minnesota Vikings, Dallas Cowboys, Houston Texans. So what you're going to do for defense is you're going to go on Google, type in NFL schedule week one, find a defense playing a shitty offense, and draft that defense. Now, I haven't done that research yet. I'm going to because I have a draft. When you're watching this, I have a draft tomorrow on Saturday, and I have one on Sunday, so I need to figure out these fucking defenses. But for right now, we're just going to go with the best available, according to the board, Denver Broncos. After we selected the Broncos, Bucker went followed by Big Ben Rothelisberger, and now we're going to go with the best kicker available, Mr. Will Lutz on the New Orleans Saints. So after we went Lutz, a bunch of kickers have been picked, followed by Alexander Madison, Tom Brady, and Anthony Miller. So, our finishing roster, our starting quarterback is Mr. Aaron Rodgers. Our two running backs are CMC and Nick Chubb. Our wideouts are Robert Woods and Chris Godwin. Our tight end is Jared Cook. Our flex is Damian Williams. Our kicker is Will Lutz, and our defense is the Broncos. Our bench is comprised of Mike Williams, Latavius Murray, MVS, Ronald Jones, Justin Jackson, and DK Metcalf. So thank you guys all for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please click that subscribe button down below. You can also click the one that's on your screen right now. It's it's uh, famous. Not It's not famous, James. It's Johnny Manziel throwing up that money sign. Click on that. Click the subscribe button because I'm going to help you guys win your championship. You're dominating these drafts, and you're enjoying these fucking videos. So you know you want to subscribe, and you know you want to click on one of the videos that's also on your screen right now because they're all going to be great. So have a great day. I love you all. Goodbye, guys.